Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pena, and I'm bringing you today's word for February 9, 2015. I'm excited about today's message, so I'm trying to, I'm trying to harness that excitement, uh, but let's get into the word. So t- today's message, uh, the title is Tapping into the Supernatural. This series is entitled Great Space Success, where we've been learning how to win in life and how to do it God's way by His unearned and amazing grace. And so today we're going to talk about tapping into that supernatural power of God, a God of no limits, a God who can do all things, and a God who wants to do those things supernaturally through us for His glory. So uh, we've been learning from the life of Daniel. And today we're going to pick up the story in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 to 35. Uh, we left off with Daniel basically telling the king, hey, uh, God showed me your dream, and he also gave me the interpretation of the dream. So today in this passage, what we're going to cover is Daniel telling the king what his dream was. And then tomorrow we'll get into the interpretation of it. So this is what Daniel said to the king. He said, king, in your dream, you saw a large statue in front of you that was very large and shining. It was actually very impressive. The head of the statue was made from pure gold. The chest and the arms were made out of silver. The belly and the upper part of the legs were made from bronze. The lower part of the legs were made from iron. The feet were kind of like half iron, half clay. Uh, While you were looking at the statue, you saw a rock that was cut loose, but not by human hands. Then the rock hit the statue on his feet, the feet of iron and clay, and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, all broke into pieces at the same time. All the pieces became like chaff on the threshing floor in the summertime. The wind blew them all away and then there was nothing left. No one could even tell that a statue had ever been there. Then the rock that hit the statue became very large, like a mountain, and it filled up the whole earth. And I'm sure the king was like, wow, this guy's telling me my dream. How did he know that? Well, Daniel could not have come up with that on his own. Daniel gave him the dream in vivid detail. How did he do that? He did it by the grace of God. God showed him supernaturally with the king dream. This reminds me of something that happened yesterday in church. My pastor, Pastor Cynthia Brazelton, preached an amazing message about the grace and the power of God. During the message, uh, she, she was just led to pray for people who needed healing, and the, the healing power of God manifested right there in the service, uh, and we had people healed right there on the spot. Afterwards, she, she called forth uh, for, for prayer. She said, listen, if you need prayer, come up here and our staff will pray for you. And so she asked the staff to come and I stood there and there was a young lady that came to me uh, for prayer. And so as she stood in front of me, she was visibly distraught. I mean, I could tell, you know, she was shaking and everything and, and, and uh, the tears were welling up in her eyes. And so before I prayed for her, I was just led to give her a little comfort. So I asked one of the sisters from the church to come and give her a hug. And so she gave her a hug and as she hugged her, man, the, the, you know, it's like the fountain broke. And so she was crying and shaking and everything. And I just waited. I was praying for her while all of that was going on. And then when she was done with the hug, I said, okay, now let me pray for you. What can I pray for you about? And, and she just looked at me with a long pause. And, and as I, I waited and, and she said, well, she shook her head and she was like, um, I can't verbalize it. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know how to explain it. And so immediately, I just said, "Oh, don't worry about it. God will show me, right?" I mean, because I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force this young lady. I mean, I could pray, uh, uh, whatever, you know, whatever the Lord shows me. So I was like, I, I, I don't need you to tell me, you know. And so I said, "Don't worry about it. God is gonna show me." So when I said that. I just kind of paused and I said, oh, okay, Lord, you know, now you need to tell me what to pray about, you know, concerning this young girl, a uh, young lady. And so I'm staying th- standing there and, um, and then I held her hand and I just kind of waited for the Lord to speak to me. And then, then, then he did. And so then the Lord had me to say several things. I saw things and then I said things. Remember, Jesus said, I only say those things. I hate my father say, I only do those things I see my father do. So, so I heard and I saw things and then I just said what I heard and said what I saw. And this is what I said to her. I said, you were raised in church. I see a little girl. You were raised by a strong Christian family. You were prayed over and many powerful things were spoken over your life. As a young girl, you believed those things. You spoke those things. You prayed about them. You were actually excited. But then life happened. Somewhere along the way, you made what you considered to be too many mistakes. You got to the point where you no longer believed. You thought you had disqualified yourself from God's plan for your life. But God says no. No, daughter, it's still yours. See, the giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. God will never give up on you. You thought you had wrecked your life, but actually you haven't. God is still there, and he's ready to do all that he said he would do through your life. Even as I'm speaking to you, 
The Lord is bringing back many things that you used to pray about and believe him for. It's like he's showing you a commercial upon the canvas of your mind. He's showing you the things one after one, over and over. And these are all the things that God wants to do in your life, not because you've earned them, but only because of his grace. And as I was talking to her, you know, she was, you know, she was agreeing. And then she agreed, yes, that she, everything I said was true. And, and, uh, and so after we were done with that, then I prayed for her. I prayed for her and uh, the Lord had me to speak several things over our life and I believe she was restored and she came into church one way and she left another way. Why? Because she came in contact with a supernatural God who loved her and wants to bless her by his unearned and amazing grace. So what does this mean to you today? I have th 10 things to share with you on this Monday morning. Let's start off the week right, right? I'm talking about tapping into the supernatural. All right, number one, the supernatural is available to you. But you will never tap into God's limitless power if you don't believe. Number two, remove every artificial limit you have ever placed on our limitless God. Number three, this is a good one. Stop asking for small things. If you only ask for things that you can do, then you're never going to use your faith and you're never going to tap into God's grace to do things that you cannot do on your own. God wants you to live a supernatural life, but you can't have what you don't ask for. You can't walk on water if you don't get out the boat. You can't hit a home run if you don't swing. So, I mean, try. I mean, reach. Stop asking for small things. Number four, your desire must be equal to all God has placed in you. Man, Pastor Cynthia said that yesterday and, and it like exploded in me. She said, your desire needs to be equal to all that God has placed in you. And then I added here, your prayers should be the size of your assignment. Your prayers should be the size of your divine assignment. You should be asking for everything that God has placed in you to manifest. You should be praying for the supernatural to happen in your life so that you can be the man, the woman that God has called and destined, designed and desires for you to be. Number five. Only God-sized prayers tap into God's grace for the supernatural. Number six, Daniel believed God would show him the king's dream. God did. It had nothing to do with Daniel's natural power, strength, or intellect. This was completely a supernatural act performed by the grace of God, accessed with the faith of Daniel. Number seven, I needed the Lord, like Daniel, I needed the Lord to show me what was going on with the young lady, and I needed him to do it supernaturally. God did. God allowed me to see her past and to speak into her future. This had nothing to do with me or my power. This had everything to do with God and his grace. But I would have never tapped into the grace of God if I had not used my faith, if I didn't believe, if I didn't say, okay, don't worry about it, God is going to show me. If I didn't ask God to show me, he would have never shown me. You see what I'm saying? So you need to use your faith. Number eight, you are only limited by your capacity to believe. You need to expand your capacity to believe God. Remove every limit that you've ever placed on him because he's the God of no limits. Number nine, the Bible says God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. The King James says are uh, uh, the giftings and the callings of God are without repentance. Here it says God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. Here's the point. The point is, like I told the young lady, God has not turned his back on you. You have not disqualified yourself from God's best. You know why? Because you never qualified yourself in the first place. Jesus qualified you. So how could you disqualify yourself from something that he qualified you for? I mean, you're qualified by God's grace. Just accept it. Believe and receive. Number 10 and finally, open your heart to receive all God has for you in this season of the greater grace. And then if you do, 2015 will be the best year of your life. So let's close this out. Head into this Monday morning. Head into this week strong. Declare this over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for teaching me about your grace and also my requirement to live by faith. There is literally nothing you cannot do. You are a God of no limits. I am a man of many limits. In my humanity, there are countless things I cannot do. But thankfully, I'm not limited to, to my humanity. I have divinity living in me. Where I can't, you can. Where my power runs out, your grace kicks in. Where my limits hit a wall, your limitless power knocks down the wall. Glory to God. <laughs> you have made all things available to me. You gave me your best when you gave me your son. And your word says that along with Jesus, you will also freely give me all other things. 
I access those things with my faith. I use my faith to access your grace to do all I was born to do. Not by my strength and not by my power. I pray God-sized prayers. My desire is equal to my assignment. You place greatness in me. So I pray for greatness to come out of me. I am dying to self daily. I am minimizing me as much as I can. And the more I do it, the more I get out of the way, the more the supernatural becomes natural to me. I will accomplish all I was born to accomplish. I will leave a mark in this world that will never be erased. I will perform the supernatural on a regular basis. I will live a life full of signs, wonders, and miracles. I will live naturally supernatural because I won't be the one doing all these things. It's you living in me. You give me the words and then you perform the work. I declare this by faith in Jesus name. Amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org, sign up, you'll get the messages and they will be a blessing to you. As you head into this day and this week, just remember the supernatural is available to you. Tap into the supernatural with your faith. God bless you.